Hi, I'm Alex Reeves, and welcome to my studio at the Drum Fortress. This is where I've recorded for artists like Naz, Uncle, Nick Cave, Bobby Womack, and a host of songwriters and producers. My studio enables me to do high quality recordings of drums and percussion so that anyone can use them on their tracks. I want to show you how you can do this kind of thing yourself. In this series of videos for iDrum Magazine, I will be taking you through the playing, recording techniques, equipment, and mixing that I use in my own studio. First though, here's a little taster. What you heard there was played by the same drummer on the same drum kit, recorded by the same mics, through the same preamps and into the same computer. The only things that changed are the effects, the processing and the mic choice after it had all been recorded. To get these sounds you need the following in order of importance. Number one, a good drummer. Number two, good sound in drums. Number three, good mics in a good room. Number four, good preamps, outboard gear and an audio converter. And number five, an effective way of listening to your music. Let's have a little look around the kit to see what I've been using. Okay, so the first thing that you need is a good drummer. I'm going to leave that up to you. Watch the other iDrum Mag tuition pages, get yourself a good teacher, play music, practice, do what you need to do to make yourself the best player that you can possibly be. We also need good sound in drums. That is not to say that you need the most expensive drums, it's just the best ones to your own ears. Make sure that you trust your ears when you're getting new equipment, when you're buying stuff. Um, there's no use in getting the shiniest gear for the studio if it doesn't sound any good. Another great thing that you need is variety. Um, I've got lots of snare drums, lots of cymbals, several different types of drum kit. If you can't afford variety, go for versatility. Um, change the, try and change the sound of the snare. Buy the most versatile snare drum that you possibly can. Have a variety of heads. Use moon gel or whatever, whatever dampening that you want on the heads so that you can get different sounds. Learn how to tune them. All of those kind of things really help. 
Um, also, find the best place in the room for your drum kit to sit. Um, it can make a lot of difference just moving a bass drum or a snare drum over a few feet um, so that you can get a bit more bass or a bit more presence in the drum sound. I'm going to go through the drums that I've got here. Um, I'm using a Sona SQ2 drum kit. It's all maple, apart from on the inside of the toms and the bass drum, there's a layer of babinga, which I think adds a bit more warmth and bottom end to the whole thing. I'll start on the snare drum here. Uh, it's a custom-made SQ2 snare drum, um, again made out of maple with a layer of babinga inside. Um, it's 13 by 6 inches and it sounds incredible and it's one of the most versatile snare drums that, um, that I own. Going slightly further over to one of the most recorded snare drums is the 1960s Ludwig Superphonic. Um, most studio drummers will have one of these in their collection somewhere. Um, it's a very useful drum. Um, the toms, I am uh, using Aquarian heads, um, texture coated on all three toms in this, uh, on this kit. Um, on the bottom is a thin head as well, so it sounds open and I get a lot of versatility from different tunings and from different uh, dampenings as well. Um, I'm using Sabian cymbals all around the kit. Again, I change according to what song and according to what, um, uh, what style. Uh, in this case, I've got an, a, um, uh, a Vault Series Artisan ride cymbal, which is my favorite ride cymbal. It's a 22-inch light ride. Um, and in this case, I've got uh, a little sizzle on there, which sounds really nice. It's actually a sync chain um, that I uh, got from B&Q or somewhere like that. Um, I also I really enjoy the, uh, the Evolution series, the HXX in this case. Um, I've got a broken one here, um, and I've also got a, um, uh, a very old set of 1950s or possibly 1960s um, uh, um, hats, which sound, which sound really nice. Um, on top of which I have a, uh, uh, a random tambourine that I made. Um, there's all sorts of other things like this. These little hi-hats are useful for, uh, for all sorts of things. They sound great. Um, so yeah. Lots of, lots of variety and versatility there. In front of the bass drum, in this case, for the previous recording that you just heard, um, I'm using an old calfskin single-headed bass drum, which I found, uh, I actually bought it off a guy in a pub in Kilburn uh, for about 30 quid. It sounds amazing. It sounds great sticking it in front of the kit because you get an extra bit of boom and warmth. On top of that, it sounds great just using it as a bass drum or a marching drum on its own. Number three, you need some good microphones. Microphones are like the ears in a studio. If uh, your microphones pick up the drums in the right way, hopefully, once you get it into the computer, you'll hear the drums in the right way. I'll show you what I'm using. Um, on the bass drum, I'm, I've got two mics in this particular instance. Inside the bass drum, I've got a, uh, an AKG D112. Uh, it's a pretty standard bass drum mic. It's not expensive either, um, and it sounds really good. It generally sounds exactly how you want a bass drum to sound. Um, in this case, I've got it right inside the bass drum to, kick, to pick up the toppy, clicky sound of the bass drum. To augment that, I've got on the outside of the bass drum an AKG uh, 414. Um, this is a, a large diaphragm condenser mic, and it's quite a versatile microphone. It's got several different, um, several different settings that will change, slightly change the sound. In this case, I've got it directly in front of the bass drum woofer with a, with a small um, decibel reduction to stop it from overpowering itself. So let's move to the snare drum. Uh, again, I've got two mics on the snare. On the top, I've got, I'm using a, um, a small diaphragm condenser mic. There's all sorts of mics that you can use. The most popular is the Shure SM57, which I do use, and I will be using in the next lesson. On this one, however, I have a Bayer Dynamic Opus 87, which is typically a live vocal mic or a vocal mic in the studio. However, I think it sounds amazing on the snare drum, so I've been using it on that. To augment that, um, underneath the snare, or in this case, in my case, uh, um, pointing at the, the shell, the side of the snare, um, I'm using a uh, Shure Beta 58, uh, which sounds, again, to augment the actual uh, snare drum itself from the, 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 mic, the top microphone. Um, it will um, add the frequencies that you might not necessarily have. If we move to the toms, um, in this case, I'm using on all three of my toms um, the Shure SM57. Um, other popular mics are Sennheiser 421s, which sound really good. Um, it's a dynamic mic, it picks up exactly the frequencies that you need for a tom to sound good on your recordings. If we can move to the overheads, um, I have, uh, in this case, I actually have four overheads on the kit. This is for versatility. Um, they're permanently set up so that I don't have to think about um, what type of mic setup that I need to use for each different recording. Um, the first set, which is the most likely that you'll use, is a stereo pair of large diaphragm condenser mics. 
Um, you could also use small diaphragm condenser mics to pick up the spots of the cymbals. Uh, in this case, I'm using these because they give a nice room sound. Um, it's quite open. These mics are Audio-Technica 4033s, a matched pair, so they sound quite similar to each other. Right above the kit is my favourite microphone, uh, the one that gives me the most solid sound on the kit and the one that I always start with, um, and that is uh, an old BBC Coles 4038. Uh, it's quite a classic microphone for recording overheads on drums. Um, it's a ribbon microphone, which means it picks up the sound in a slightly different way to the condenser mics uh, and the dynamic mics. Um, it suits what I need it for perfectly. The last microphone that I'm using on the kit um, is on this side of the kit. Um, I'm actually using um, a cheaper ribbon mic. Um, it's actually less than 100 quid, this thing, but it's, again, it sounds really good. And it picks up all of the, uh, all of the kind of bass end of my toms um, and gives a nice kind of smooth, rounded sound um, if I ever need to use it. Also, I have a room microphone, another Coles 4038. OK, so now we've moved from the drum kit over to where all my outboard gear is. So number four, you need good preamps, good outboard gear and good audio conversion. Here I've got um, several different preamps which the mics are plugged into. Um, for the purposes of now I'm going to show you what I've got, but I'll also give you some advice on what you could buy and how you could do this. Um, the first thing that I use is uh, a strip of API 312s. Um, there's four of these. So I'm using um, the first one here, I'm using on the bass drum. The second one I'm using on the snare drum. And then right now, for the purposes of this recording, I've got um, the two overheads going through the last two of the APIs. They have a certain sound and character to, uh, to preamps, like all preamps will add something to the sound. It might be good, it might be bad. You've got to choose, you've got to look at the forums and use your ears to decide what you want to buy. The second thing I'm using is a strip of DAV preamps. Um, again, for the purposes of this recording, I'm using the ribbon mics through here. So I've got the Coles 4038 going through the first channel of the DAVs and the room mic Coles 4038 going through um, the second of the DAV channels. I've also got a, um, a, a Focusrite Trackmaster here. Um, it's pretty good. I'm using it for the uh, for the 414 that's outside the bass drum, mainly because it allows me to add a bit of EQ to uh, to the setting on the way in. Um, what I mean by that is uh, I can take some of the frequencies out and add some more frequencies, so that when the actual recording is happening, it records with those frequencies in or out. On top of this, I've also got a, um, a stereo compressor. Um, I'm actually not using it for this recording, but sometimes I'll use it on the overheads or sometimes I use it on the bass drum and snare drum. Um, uh, a compressor will essentially limit the audio, the audio range that you can get from, uh, from a microphone. So it will make the louder stuff quieter and it will make the quieter stuff louder, or it can do those things if you want them to do that. Um, other preamps I'm using um, are um, this, little, this little tube thing by a company called Art. I'm using um, one of the other river mics through this. It sounds quite nice. Um, it's pretty cheap so it's uh, it's um, uh, it's very it's very easily to uh, very easily affordable for you um, uh, but it still sounds pretty good. Um, I'm also using the preamps on the front of my Motu. The Motu itself is the audio converter. This is what converts the microphone signal, the analog, into uh, a digital signal that the computer can understand and read and then it will convert it back again to audio so that you can listen to it out of your speakers. Um, it's a very important part of the recording process um, and will probably, although very expensive, make quite a lot of difference um, to the quality of your recordings. I'm also using a, a Mackie desk. Um, for now I'm just using it for um, monitoring purposes so I can hear everything in the right way. So I've got um, signal from the Moto 828 going into the uh, Mackie desk and then um, I can change that and alter it according to how I like my um, head headphones to be while I'm actually playing this. Uh, uh, you could also use this to replace all of my um, preamps here. So the API, the DAV, the Focusrite, this little art thing here, the front of these, all of which can be coped with by, um, by using something like a Mackie desk or, or another type of desk. As long as they've got preamps in so that you can power the microphones, um, this might well be, and this, the 828, might well be all that you need to do to start off recording. 
You'll also need to record onto something. Um, either you use tape or, like most studios now, you use a computer. I'm using a Mac, um, onto which I have put Logic Pro, uh, which allows me to record all the microphones into the computer at all times. I can then process following that um, so that I can, make the, uh, I can make the drums sound like I want them to. Okay, number five, we need to be able to hear what we've recorded. We need to be able to hear the music that we're actually involved in playing. Um, in this case, I'm using um, a set of focal solo sixes. To augment that, I'm also using a, a smaller monitor, a little mono avatone monitor, uh, which um, gives me a different reference for the mixes that I do. Um, and on top of that, you also need to be able to hear it in the way that people listen to music or pretty much all the time now, and that is through these. Well, iDrum, thanks for watching. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at recording with a minimal mic setup. Any questions, please contact me via my website or on my Facebook page, Alex Reeves Drums.